Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. The email purchase and pricing question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a 2008 model year release made in 90 pieces, 41 millimeters in platinum. This is the Audemars Piguet Jules Audemars Cantien Perpetuel. 30th anniversary, a timepiece dedicated to the 30th anniversary of the famed 1978 reference 25548, an ultra-thin automatic winding perpetual calendar that basically kept the lights on at Audemars Piguet in the late 70s and early 80s and recapitulated AP's commitment to high horology mechanical watchmaking during a period when quartz was king. The model was made right through the early 90s and it's one of the most important models ever built by AP. This watch, featuring the same base movement, pays tribute to that landmark model. It is larger, however. At 41 millimeters, it's still svelte at 9.2 millimeters thick and 47.1 millimeters lug to lug. It shows its hand as a modern watch with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs so it has a nice broad planted stance on the wrist and it does look contemporary. On my wrist which is 16 centimeters in circumference you can see the watch is an easy fit. Being only 47 millimeters across the wrist you can see the lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist even from the top that's quite obvious so it's a very comfortable watch. A dress watch it'll fit underneath the cuff. A moderately sized watch you can wear it on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. You can feel the heft of it. In platinum it feels special and it is special. I would also say that because it's a white metal and a blue dial, it's a little bit sportier than a traditional ultra-thin complicated dress watch would be. So you can absolutely wear this with short sleeves or casual attire. The white metal is unassuming and the darker blue dial with a little bit of color gives it a more casual appearance than if it were, for example, silver dialed. Taking a quick look at the hardware and the software, a lot to love here. You can see an Audemars Piguet factory strap in outstanding condition. Calfskin on the underside, navy blue, a large rectangular scale alligator leather on the top with a monotone stitch, a folded edge, and you can see that it has a semi-gloss finish. Both sides of the strap are in outstanding condition, and the watch is equipped with an AP single-fold deployant logo style clasp, and you can see it too is precious metal hallmarked and in platinum. You can tell it's platinum, not white gold, because of the whiteness of it. Now, you can tell the same thing when you take a look at the case. This is very bright white. PT950 is nothing like white gold. It truly does appear mirror-like. Uh, you can also see that this is a handmade case in the finest tradition of the Valet du Jeu. A satin-finished mid-case with a lovely bowl-like profile. You can see the bezel is stepped inward to accentuate the thin profile of the case and reduce the apparent mass. The bezel has a vertical portion and a conical portion, both polished. The lug hoods are polished, and then you can see that the sides of the lugs are vertically finished, whereas the case is longitudinally finished, and the welded joint where the lugs were welded to the case, that joint is then removed manually to create a sharper break. Welding the lugs on separately instead of stamping the whole thing or just machining it is an old-school, handcrafted way to make a case. It takes more time, it takes more skill, it requires more money, but AP was not pinching pennies or going modern tech with the fabrication of this watch. This was not an automated project. You can also see from the dial, which is a blue metallic sunburst, lots to love. Cruciform symmetry, split it vertically or horizontally, and it's symmetrical. You have a mono counter at the top with the leap year phase as well as the month, and you have your radial date, radial day, and a moon phase and moon age down at six o'clock with white gold hands, leaf hands at center as well as for the registers. And then outboard, you have stick-style indices that have been faceted. They, too, are in white gold and placed by hand. Turn it all over. Ah, the good old days. This rotor was gorgeous, and I regret that AP eventually phased it out because you can see why I love this watch. Let's start with the basics. You can see here that the case back serial number as well as the addition number have been freehand engraved so not just stamped not just chiseled by a drill bit they have been freehand engraved the way the movements of longas are freehand engraved done with a traditional burin and hand eye coordination hard to do in platinum which is a very soft material that likes to deform 
You can also see that the rotor, oh, that rotor, it's gorgeous. Note that it is entirely skeletonized and then freehand engraved. And then internally, you can see it has been mirror beveled. Take a look at some of the highlights. You can see there are sharply creased interior angles, actually a bunch of them. You can also see two lovely, between the A and the P logos, you can see that the center features two lovely outward points, three outward points, as a matter of fact, and creating those sharp interior creases and those sharp outward points, the most difficult assignments in watch finishing. If you look closely, you can also see that this is a 38 joule movement and it's been adjusted in five positions. Um, the traditional hydrology and chronometer standard is five positions. Today, AP no longer lists adjustment on the rotors of the movements using this base caliber, so I suspect they are no longer comprehensively adjusted. Moreover, today's AP rotor is extensively machine made. It isn't lavishly handcrafted like this one. It's true, they don't build them like they used to. The base movement is the 2120-4, and then the module is the 2802. The 2802 is the perpetual calendar moon phase. This is the 2120-4. It's based on the JLC 920 Abouch that debuted in 1967 and was designed for and used exclusively by AP Patek and Vacheron. Today, AP makes this movement in-house and hand finishes it, so it is an in-house caliber today. It's a unidirectional winder. It has a 40-hour power wizard. If it beats away at a vintage-like 19,800 vibrations per hour that speaks to the age of the movement, and it is still one of the best ultra-thin automatics available, as the base caliber itself is just 2.4 millimeters thick, and the entire movement with perpetual calendar is just 4 millimeters thick. Now, you can see it is a free-sprung balance with a gyromax-style architecture and a variable polar moment wheel, so the balance wheel has little inertia blocks, you can see them, they're adjusted with a wrench, and that changes the polar moment to adjust the timing of the watch. So the free sprung system allowing for precise adjustment, it's also very shock tolerant. You can see that this ring that runs around, it's actually an annular rotor. Uh, the, the ring goes all the way around. One side has the mass, but the ring is continuous. There are four ruby rollers built into the base plate of the movement, and this beryllium ring sits on top of those rollers, allowing the rotor to be sunk into down very close to the bridges without actually coming into contact with the bridges or the base plate. Uh, so that is a thin profile feature. You can see Cote de Genève laid down by abrasive wheels across the, across the bridges. Then we have mirrored anglage on the edge of the bridges. You'll note you don't get that kind of anglage on a mass-produced AP movement like a 4401, 4302, or a 3120. All screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots. You can see there's solarization on some of the wheels, such as the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel, and then satination on the wheels of the trains. There's also an engine turning on the base plate, and all of this very traditionally rendered. And of course, because it is a perpetual calendar, you will not need to make an adjustment to the calendar itself until the year 2100 can deal with irregular length months. It can deal with leap years. Please reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this timepiece. One last bit of advice. 20 meters water resistant, so if you've got to go swimming, take an offshore with you.